See this? You're looking at the best full portrait of the sun by far. Thankfully, our 4.5 billion year old parent star didn't use any makeup to fix its skin tone before this photo shoot. And now we can study its surface in great detail. This iconic image was taken in March 2022. NASA wanted to gain a better understanding of solar behavior and its impact on life on Earth, and the future of our space technologies, of course. To do so, they launched the Solar Dynamics Observatory Satellite, or SDO, mission in February 2010. This legendary photo shoot happened 12 years later, when SDO was halfway between the Earth and the Sun. Scientists had to assemble 25 individual images like a puzzle. So the final image contains 83 million pixels. Yeah, the resolution is about 10 times better than your fancy 4K TV screen. Look at this amazing cookie-like pattern. Typically, the bright surface of the sun overshadows it when we observe the star from Earth. Thankfully, NASA explored the light beyond the visible range, which allowed them to discover some invisible details of the sun's face. When you adjust your selfie with filters and effects, you can end up with completely different portraits, highlighting different spots of your face, even those you didn't know existed. Hmm. The same principle works here. All these plasma balls are the same photo of the sun captured at different electromagnetic wavelengths. The revealed spots and patterns can help us understand events happening inside the sun's skin a little better. At the speed of light is supposed to mean super quick. But this rose gold ray caressing your cheek at dawn has come a long way and is incredibly old in human terms. Photons generated by the sun's core take between 10,000 to 170,000 years to travel through the star's atmosphere, and then around 8 minutes more to reach Earth. So let's explore what's taking them so long. Our tour begins with the upper layer of the sun's atmosphere. Remember solar deities in movies and theater plays? They often wear luxurious crowns with golden rays. Well, the real sun does wear a fancy corona too, which is the outer layer of its atmosphere. But of course, its size and glory are incomparable with those plastic costume crowns. And its shape is not so stable. Corona is a gas shell enveloping our parent star, so its size and form constantly fluctuate under the influence of the sun's magnetic field. You can spot this crown with the naked eye from Earth during total solar eclipses. It looks like a beautiful, intense radiation around the solar disk, which itself is completely blocked by the Moon. The corona stretches 5 million miles above the Sun's surface, whereas our blue planet is only about 8,000 miles in diameter. So one hypothetical ray of the corona equals a row of about 625,000 Earth-sized planets. And suddenly, all my problems begin to seem tiny. Now here's another fun fact. The sun's corona kind of breaks the laws of known physics because it's hotter than it should be. Its temperature reaches 2 million degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the surface of the sun is only about 9,000 degrees. Although the word only doesn't fit here, because it's still super warm in human terms. Usually temperature tends to fall as you move farther from a heat source, but it's not the case here. Space scientists are still scratching their heads trying to investigate this mystery. Thankfully, the recent photo shoot allows us to explore what's going on inside this massive hot stuff without risking losing our sight. Take these beautiful bright spots, for example. They depict solar flares happening under the corona layer. Solar flares are powerful explosions that happen when magnetic fields bump into each other. When it happens, they change shape and quickly reorganize. These fields arise from plasma, which is very turbulent itself, so these events are no surprise for the local weather. Now who would have thought that the sun has dark spots on its skin, just like people? These darker areas are known as coronal holes. Earthlings can experience their impact when they observe the beautiful aurora lights in the polar regions. Coronal holes look darker because plasma in these spots is cooler, less dense, and magnetically open. These conditions allow the solar winds to escape outward across the solar system rather than hang out at the sun's surface. And when they bump into the Earth's magnetosphere, auroras emerge to fascinate our eyes. Thankfully, the local fields cool down the solar winds. Nobody wants their eyes to melt, right? Now, if we were looking for an analogy to the sun's hairs, the best candidate would be solar prominences. These large, bright plasma loops arise from the sun's surface and stretch for thousands of miles into space. 
Their lifespan varies from days to several months. It's one of the most common events in this region. Although the first detailed description of solar prominence dates to the 14th century, modern scientists are still researching how and why they're formed. Diving further inwards, we're facing the transition region. The thickness of this layer is about 62 miles, and the local weather is unthinkable. <laughs> Temperatures can rise up to 900,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The transition layer sits between the corona and the last region of the sun's atmosphere, called the chromosphere. Now, speaking of which, welcome to our next stop. The chromosphere region is famous for a scientific mystery called a spicule. Come on, say it with me. Spicule. Yeah, that's fun. These spectacular grassy-like jets of plasma fire upwards from the surface of the sun and reach speeds of approximately 224 miles per second, as if they're jumping on a trampoline from the surface of the sun. Each spicule lasts for just a few minutes in outer space before falling back into the solar atmosphere. Astronauts were having a challenging time trying to explain how magnetically charged particles could manage to escape the massive gravity of the Sun while being so close to it. The possible answer emerged in 2017. A group of scientists discovered that neutral particles provided the magnetically charged particles with extra buoyancy to escape the solar gravity for a while. Which is better than my cousin's explanation, which is happy thoughts and pixie dust. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and travel 1,000 miles inward toward the chromosphere to finally reach the solar surface, the photosphere. It's around 248 miles thick. But unlike planet Earth, the sun's surface is not solid or stable at all. The temperatures here are insanely hot for any matter to exist. On the other hand, scientists often call plasma the fourth state of matter. And why not? It's made of ionized atoms and free electrons, so it kind of deserves to matter. So what's the matter? <laughs> Maybe someday we'll happen to meet the local civilization of plasmoid people. But I think it's best that we skip their welcoming warm hugs. You know, hot hot hot. Anyway, the photosphere is our final stop, because humankind doesn't have the technology to explore the sun any deeper. So if you want to learn more, you'll have to invent your own spacecraft. But time's a wasting. You'll only have about 7 to 8 billion years. After that, our sun will fade away, according to scientists' estimates. Actually, those same scientists will be going first. Now you have a serious competitor, though. NASA's Parker Solar Probe is the current champion for the deepest dive into the sun. The spacecraft managed to travel 4.5 million miles from the sun's surface toward its core on September 27, 2023. And then, the Parker probe repeated its own record once again in December of the same year. So why didn't it melt, I hear you asking? The probe has been designed to withstand insanely intense conditions and temperature fluctuations. It's equipped with a custom heat shield and an autonomous system protecting the mission from the massive solar lights. NASA has further ambitious plans. In December 2024, Parker will make its closest approach to the Sun. It will travel faster than any man-made object has ever traveled, at the speed of 435,000 miles per hour. The probe will be just 3.8 million miles away from the Sun's glowing hot surface. It's like landing on a star. Astronomers have already compared this epic upcoming milestone with the moon landing. I'm thinking, however, it might be safer if we, you know, landed at night. Yeah, you're right, that's an old joke. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.